Hi, Antonio. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. I'm getting used to the colder weather here in Christian Sund in Norway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. But yeah, I'm doing great. I'm working here in the utility offices and I'm, I'm having a great time, actually. I arrived three weeks ago and it's been great so far. That's so nice to hear. How long are you going to stay here? Actually, I believe it's about, I said three weeks, but actually I arrived two weeks ago and it's going to be around eight weeks, more or less. So I'm going to stay here until the 3rd of July. Yeah, well, at least you get the best part of the year here. Uh, what I would like to talk to you about today is about the important events since the launch of the course and maybe other things that you have going behind the scenes because it's been a crazy start. A lot of people have jumped in. There is a lot of noise on Twitter or LinkedIn about this and a lot of people are very really excited about it. So let's go over what you think is most important that has happened since the course launched? Yeah, sure. Maybe I can share my screen and make you a quick overview of all the important things. As you know, we have recently or relatively recently released the IFCJS crash course. We are releasing it module by module. Right now we are in the CSS part. But this weekend we will start with the JavaScript part. And the idea is to continue going, right? So this is exciting because I see a lot of people that have never coded before or perhaps had some experience with Python and so on or with Dynamo and now they are getting to make things that are, let's say, more professional or at least that they can use to make professional products using IFCJS and I love to see the community growing and helping each other. But the best part about this course is that we have raised around 40k dollars more or less and now we are using all that money into bounties and this is something that we released i believe around two weeks ago more or less and we didn't expect the response that we got because we were expecting like a couple of people to stand up and say okay i want to collaborate but actually if you take a look at the bounties that people took i think we have already given half of the bounties are already taken and that means that we have given away around eight thousand dollars in some more or less a week and that means also that in a week we have gotten things like a DXF export, which is much better than what we had before. So now we can you can take an EFC and export all the floor plans in DXF or PDF or whatever you like. There's also so a person working in a clash detector, which is almost finished, which means that now you will be able to build clash detection with IFCJS. A lot of documentation, I don't know, many things going on at the same time. And there's a lot of people excited about this. And the plan is to continue with that. We will release more bounties. We will give more money to the community that contribute. And the interesting thing is that now, if you take a look at github.com ifcjs hello world, the community is starting to create their own bounties. So here you see two bounties that have been proposed by the community. And this, these are people that are patrons. And the idea is that in the medium term, the patrons are going to be the people that decide what bounties do we have to do in depending on what they need. So the people that contribute to the project are the people that decide what the next steps are in the short, medium term. So that means that I can also vote on what you are going to do in the future. How can somebody do that? If you go to issues and you create a new issue, there's actually a proposed bounty template. And if you get started, you have something like this and you can explain your bounty and simply submit that. And it automatically has the label and everything. So we can talk about it. And in the end, the community decides what the next steps are. And we are trying to empower the community with this. So we have, let's say, this is going to be a bit, I don't know, but for, until now we have worked in a project just us, like just us writing code, but this was not enough. So we have the courses, which so far have made uh, $40,000, but we are going to release more advanced courses. The plan is to make, in addition to what we have now, $100,000 before the end of the year and to use that money to create bounties that are going to be like, that means that all this money is going back to the community that contribute to the project. And this goes back to the code in terms of new features, new documentation and so on. And of course, this has an impact of, you know, the more we have, the more we offer, the more people want to learn, which means that the more people will submit to the course. So we can generate more money and that means more bounties and the project keeps growing. This is more or less the model of what will happen in the short term in IFCJS. We are also preparing something that we haven't announced yet, which is a small web page in which people learning IFCJS and company using IFCJS will be able to participate in a board that is similar to this board. And you will be able to see all the people working, what do they do, their portfolios, their applications they have developed, and 
people that are looking for a new job or looking for collaboration or companies that are looking for IFCJ steps will be able to come together in this place. It's going to be called talents.ifcjs.io and the idea is to empower the community even more because the reality is that we are talking with a lot of companies that are building products and need 3JS and FCJS developers and also a lot of developers wanting to get into the BIM developer world and they obviously want to get started working for a company developing a product, right? So I think it's the perfect recipe. So that's more or less... Just one second, sorry for jumping in. I want to ask you something regarding this. Yeah. This is going to be a very straightforward <coughs> question. I really want to understand it. I don't think I asked you this. What is in this for you? Why are you doing this, everything you do? Because you are not getting any money from IFCJS. What is the reasoning behind? What motivates you to do this? I don't know why do some people build ships inside bottles. <laughs> I just have fun with the project. I think it's very exciting. And I think that I was asked this question some time ago. I would lie if I said that the project has given nothing to me and I'm doing this out of pure altruism. I'm working for a very nice company thanks to the project because the project gave me visibility. I'm meeting a lot of new people. I'm getting invited to a lot of events. I'm learning a lot from a lot of people that probably would be out of reach if I wasn't doing this project. So yeah. yes, I mean, I'm, right now I'm not getting any money out of it. All the money goes to the, you know, to the community, but I think there's much more in life rather than money. And I'm not just talking in a hippie way, like really having visibility, having contacts, knowing people, it's also other very important personal assets. And the project has given me that. But to be honest, the ultimate reason is because I think it's something that makes me excited and that I would love this to succeed, you know? You already succeeded. Yeah, no, 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 but this is, I mean, <laughs> this, this is... That, that does not mean that you cannot do work, but just remembering what we were discussing last year, a lot of stuff has happened. You achieved so much since then. You and everyone involved, because you are the motivator, you are the motor behind. I'm sure there are fighter people that I don't see about them, but they are doing a tremendous job here, right? Mm. I don't know too many people involved, but they are definitely more contributing, because otherwise it would have been not like this. Yeah, for instance, Jesus is the CEO of Apogea, a engineering company in Malaga, Spain, mm -hmm. and he has contributed a lot with this because until recently the project was just a bunch of guys developing code now we yeah. are trying to not only do that but also make the whole thing scalable and he has helped a lot in that sense because it's a bit hard to have both the technical and the commercial view of things and i think he has a lot of experience commercial wise so he was more or less the one that proposed us to you know start developing something like this that could make it scalable one thing because before i forget and if we can go back to this later if you want but another thing that we have done we have presented the project to the google google has released a grant um, yeah a grant and we have presented the project to that grant let's say revealing what's going to be the medium term plans for the project right now the project is just a, you know that when we are talking about a platform, a BIM platform, it has two parts, the front end and the back end, right? Of yeah. course, this, it can be much more complex, but in summary, it's something like this. And right now, IFCJS is just making the BIM part of the front end. We are thinking now of making a, let's say, full front end. So that is ready to use by any framework, something similar to the Forge Viewer that is ready to use straight out of the box. Again, completely free and open everything, but much more opinionated. Something that is more finished, that is customizable, but ready to use. And perhaps in the future, we also set up something regarding the backend and the infrastructure. And who knows, maybe because this has to be paid simply because when you have infrastructure, you are renting computer from Google or Amazon and that costs money. That's, that's the reason why it cannot be free unless you have your own computer at your home and so on, but nobody does that. So who knows, maybe in the end, we managed to have a whole, something that is exactly like Forge, but that belongs to the community. And that of course costs money, but perhaps the money that it costs is just the, the money of the infrastructure. So it would be like, an order of magnitude cheaper than what you can get out of SaaS services like Forge. Meaning that if tomorrow a company wants to build a BIM product, they have everything. They have all the pieces that they can have from Forge, but without the surprises like, okay, from now on the tokens will be three times as expensive, things like that, right? Which recently happened in Forge. This doesn't aim to get money. The aim of this is to allow anyone to, to become a 
being software developer, either as an individual or as a company. And in the end, again, we are not, I believe, we are not making anything new. We are just making the same stuff that we all know, but making it open, which in my opinion, it's something so strong. If we are able to reach a critical mass of technology and community, it's so strong that it's going to be very hard to compete with it. Because, you know, imagine that you have a business model based on, let's say, class detection, and suddenly we release a class detector that is free and anyone can create their own class detector tool relatively easily. I believe that if the main asset of your business is the technology that you have closed, it's very fragile because how are you going to compete with the 50 new companies that come up with a class detector, right? On the contrary, I believe that if you have a strong community, that is not something you can destroy or at least endanger that easily. Having a strong community means that if tomorrow everything changes and all your technology is obsolete, they will stick with you because they trust you and they will probably trust that you will be able to come up with a solution to the problem. Yeah, that's true. That's true indeed. Regarding the Google grants and so on, do you think there is a real chance to get admitted for that and get some money from Google? No idea. I have absolutely no idea. Actually, you can check that out here, I believe. No, it was in here. I wish that they give us something. I'm not sure if they are interested in this. I am aware that Microsoft is interested in in making digital twins, they released something recently. But yeah, I don't know. Here we just made a list of features that Forge has, the features that we already have and the features that are going to be done. And we are making a simple estimation, which we say that, okay, we're going to get this money this year, probably. So if we get this from Google, we will probably be able to carry out all of this in, let's say, less than a year. That would be amazing. I think it's important to state that we are not begging for money. I don't think, and this is of course, just my opinion, but I don't think open source should be bound to altruistic donations. Doing that is nice, of course. And in fact, we I donated a lot to Garrett Johnson, whose open source work enabled us to do a lot of things. But I, I think that the key to be able to make open source succeed is to find sustainable model that does not rely on the level of altruism of the people of a certain community. So that, in other words, People pay because they get something in exchange in addition to the good feeling of, okay, I'm helping making the industry better, which is nice. I completely agree with that feeling, but I don't think it's a very realistic, sustainable model. That is very true. And there is other aspect to that. I don't know how you are, but every one of us, even if our unconscious mind expects in a way to get something in return, even if it's just symbolic or insignificant, right? So that's why it's very difficult for a lot of people to just donate and not being a part of community or something like that, even being a part of a chat or something like that, or getting some access to some materials, some courses and so on, is <coughs> identifying you to be more willing to contribute. I think this is a key part of the success so far. So this was very, very, very well done. Also, another the other day I was speaking to the CEO of a big BIM software company, and he was asking me, OK, he loved the project, by the way. I won't say the name because I think they will support the project publicly soon. So I don't want to spoil the surprise. Wow. But they asked me, what if the detector that you are doing is not as good as the class detector of a someone that has been making class detection for years? My answer would be, it doesn't matter because if I build a community that is sustainable enough, it's just a matter of time that with the help of people like Garrett Johnson, the software engineer at NASA, we come up with something better or at least equally good, which means that we have already won because our solution is free. So that means that if we are in a tie, we win. And that is also an advantage. Yeah, yeah. And uh, not only that, it will just snowball. Even if in the first phase, it will not be equal, you will have other people contributing and each very small contribution will amount to something really big, right? And I'm thinking there is still not a place where you can just find these rule sets available for everyone. And imagine a community doing all these rule sets for checking for class detection for all the disciplines and so on. Everyone like coming with his or her part, right? And you put together a library of rule sets that will be very, very powerful. Like this is why Solibri is so powerful and chosen right now over other softwares. Not only that, but also like all the people coding that getting paid for it, you know, like a, getting a lot of money out of it just for participating. Because I think that, again, it's a mistake to think in a world in which we are all giving away our free time. And I mean, I do that, but just because I chose to do that. But I would never ask 
anyone to do that. And I think that the best, I mean, I totally agree with that view, but I would add, yes, a lot of people making that in a very agile way so that probably many big companies won't be able to keep up with the speed, but also getting paid for that, getting paid with the money that the community is able to generate with their own resources without relying on donations, which by the way, just out of donations, we are making at least something like almost 1,000 a month, which is, in my opinion, already a decent quantity and it's getting even higher. You know, one example of what I'm talking about is that, you know, that a lot of, I, I believe that not a lot of companies are able to generate uh, catch drawings out of big models. And this is something that Garrett Johnston, the software engineer working at NASA, did for the bounty in three days or four days. And I know companies that are around 200 BIM software developers and weren't able to make this feature, even putting the best dev to work on this for months. So I really think that this kind of agility of finding the right person that knows to solve your problem and also being generous in the when paying them, of course. Yes, I mean, Garrett got uh, $2,000 in four days, but just because I value that knowledge and I value, I mean, it's not a matter of asking someone to sit down and spend a lot of time programming for you. It's a matter of finding the right people to solve the right problems for you and, mm -hmm. and, yeah. get, and paying them, paying them always and paying them generously. I don't know if that works exists, but in a generous way, like don't scatimate. You have to be generous when paying people for that kind of work. You pay for the value and for the impact on the project. It makes sense. This is how an economy should work, yep. an ideal economy. Yep. Uh, I don't know. I believe that if we keep going like this, if we keep this ecosystem for this year, and who knows, maybe this year we make something like this, in which this kind of software as a service infrastructure also helps maintaining the project so that there's people that pay to have this infrastructure and a little bit of that money goes back to the project that goes to bounties to help developing more and more and more. I don't know, I think it's going to be quite scary for companies whose main asset right now is the technology that they have in closed source, you know? Yeah, well, you know what? We should not care about what other companies are doing. What is most important here is that finally we'll have a tool that is revolutionizing the AC and it gives us the power to do something about this because unfortunately we don't have it yet. From this also comes an advantage, right? Because you are the first building this kind of community which accelerate faster and it's easier without competition, let's say. I think this is also a good thing and I'm really happy to be able to think about a thing like this happening because I am interested about open source for many years, open source for AAC, right? And yeah, there always have been some softwares and so on but nothing that can revolutionize the entire industry, that can empower you to build your own application or a tool that works for free. I hope one day Blender Beam will do as well and to really compete with the proprietary solutions, right? Yeah, I know. I really hope that this keeps growing. Of course, there's already many companies, including my company, Utility, using IFCJS and taking advantage of the power of the community. I really hope that this will go even bigger and I don't know, hopefully if companies like Microsoft or Google want to get into them, they don't have to start solving the problem from scratch. They can use our effort to make things more agile and I don't know, I like to think that we will be able to help them also when they decide to step into this digital twin world. Yeah. Now we are getting to the really interesting part of the course, JavaScript and after that, the tools and everything else. So it's going to be really exciting to be that done, but I can't wait for the course to finish and to see all these applications that will take shape afterward. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, now the lessons are again going to start being longer and a bit harder, but hopefully the people is also getting more familiar with coding and so on. So yeah, I'm also very keen to start this part. Yeah, awesome, Antonio. Thank you very much for joining me again. And I'm looking forward to our next chat. Yeah, thanks a lot for the invitation, Petru. See you next time.